Hello there YouTube, it's your boy B3, back with another kicking, you guessed it, TV reaction review. I reviewed a more recent Hulk TV show recently, and reviewing another Hulk cartoon today, The Incredible Hulk, the animated series from 1996. This puppy ran for two seasons, you can watch it on Disney+, Plus, YouTube, Google Play Movies and TV, Voodoo, and Amazon Prime Video. I of course watched it on Disney Plus has got a 6.7 out of 10 on IMDb, a 76% on Google. Just pretty basic. Since a laboratory accident, Dr. Bruce Banner has had a tendency to become the Hulk. That That's it. It's pretty easy, and you know, General Ross is hunting him down the whole time, and Betty and Doc Sampson and Rick are trying to help him, and then there's the leader who has the gargoyle, and they have... What I guess the writers thought was witty, witty banter with each other, the abominations there. You know, a lot of, a lot of them's in the show. Absorbing Man, all the basics, you know, all the basics. Huh. But, yeah, so, it originally aired in 1996 on September 8th uh, on UPN. And the final episode, I believe, aired in November 23rd of 1997. Yeah, and this show was also known as The Incredible Hulk and She-Hulk because She-Hulk has, like, a really big role in the show. She's in it a lot. Doctor Doom accidentally, uh, leads Bruce Banner to accidentally creating her. And once she becomes a She-Hulk, she's kind of, like, living her best life. You know, like, I feel like she was written to just be, like... Something hot that adolescent boys watching the show could fawn over, which is a little weird. Uh, more than a little weird. But, you know, now it's kind of just like, hey, she's got the power, and she's living her best life. So, you know, I can't fault her for it. Even if she's, she's like the exact opposite of the She-Hulk in... <laughs> she's the opposite of the She-Hulk in the uh, Agents of Smash show, which is pretty weird. Pretty whack. But yeah, it's actually not a long watch. The seasons are relatively short. They're each like half of the length, uh, if not less of the length of time as the uh, Agents of Smash. You know, it's got some dated animation. It has a really cool opener. Like a really excellent, excellent opening theme and animation. Really cool. Um, and then like lots of the transformation animation and stuff looks really good. But like... A lot of it's just, just 90s television children animation. It's about what you would expect from the time. About the same as the X-Men show and stuff. But it is a fun watch. It's nothing groundbreaking. It's nothing crazy. There are a lot of coloring issues. Like sometimes the color of someone's hair will change. And then in another shot it's back to the way it was. Uh, you know, just little animation errors like that. Uh, it has the Grey Hulk in it. Which is pretty cool. I did not expect the Grey Hulk to be in this. He even takes up Joe Fixit to go undercover in Vegas at one point. I mean, it's a kid's show, so I'm, you know, it's no surprise why they didn't go full Joe Fixit, you know? Have our hero just be a mafia man? Yeah, no. Yeah, full made man, I don't think... I don't think they would have gone there. And I don't think they really should have. Which is good, because they didn't. But still, I liked how, like, the Grey Hulk had different facial features. It wasn't just a straight-up recolor. Like, he had a completely different head, which was very interesting. Very cool. And it was a fun show. It really was. Uh, at one point, like, for the first season, General Ross is really the main villain. Uh, and Leader is, like, the major... Well, I, wouldn't, I don't want to call General Ross a villain. Antagonist. General Ross is an antagonist, but the leader is the main villain. And then in season two, General Ross is in a coma for most of it. And uh, main villain is the leader. And the leader the whole time is trying to, like, absorb the Hulk's strength. Because he has... He's, like, the smartest on the planet. He also wants to be the strongest on the planet. And at one point he achieves it, but not in a way that works for him. Uh, but at the end of the show, you can kind of tell they probably knew they weren't going to get another season. Because General Ross comes out of his coma and kind of starts to accept Bruce. Because, like, in the first season, Bruce is on the run the entire time. And then in the second season, he's just, like, applying for research grants and 
just like the stuff he'd do if he wasn't the Hulk. He's doing normal scientist stuff. So General Ross being in a coma, I guess, really, really made it so that he could just live a normal life. And then he's trying to find a cure for She-Hulk, and she's like, dude, I don't want a cure. This is awesome, because she's in complete control. It was whack. It was an enjoyable show, you know? It's not as it's not anywhere near as good as X-Men, the animated series, which I have reviewed. Nowhere close to as good as X-Men. Or Spider-Man. But it's still a fun watch. And if you've seen the other shows, why not give this one a go, huh? Why not give this one a go? All the stuff that happens in it is mostly basic Hulk stuff you've seen before. It's like, oh, Rick Jones gets the Hulk's powers in it, but we've kind of seen that in the comics with Rick, like, becoming A-bomb and stuff, and then all that weird stuff he went through in The Immortal Hulk. So you're not going to see a lot of new stuff, but it's fun. Like, if you're, like, cleaning house, put flop it on the TV. If you got a kid that likes the Hulk, I think they'll still like that. And there is a lot of drama in it. The best part of the show is honestly just the drama of the people that are trying to cure Bruce and the people that are trying to kill Bruce butting heads. You know, the army wants to destroy him. And the weird thing about this show is that they come up with several successful cures. Several. But either like a supervillain interrupts the treatment or uh, the military interrupts the treatment because they don't want Banner cured. They want him dead. Or just something insane like interrupts it or there's like a side effect after he's cured and he has to get the hulk back to fix it pretty neat like i'm used to hulk media just having you know cures fail over and over and over again uh but this one having cures that would have worked but someone got in the way because they just wouldn't listen to scientists <laughs> you know it's pretty cool. I really enjoyed Hulk the Animated Series. It's a fun little show, but it's like nothing really special like X-Men. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. I'm going to be reviewing a bunch of these old Marvel animated shows. Like, you know, there's the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, then there's an older one, and then there's Spider-Man and his amazing friends, Spider-Woman, you got Silver Surfer. You know, the Iron Man one. There's still a, a lot of these that I need to get to, you know? And I'm glad they're all up on Disney+, Plus. a lot of them in their entirety now. Even if some of these uh, episodes and some of these shows are out of order, like they were in X-Men. But that's it. Thank you all once again for your support, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.